I'd like to work with you on Sanchin Kata right now. And um, some things to think about before we get into the kata. Number one, even though the, the pattern of movement of the kata is rather simplistic, uh, still think of this kata as an advanced form because it does take a, a, a bit of a skill to actually perform it correctly. Before we get into San Chin, I want to work a couple little drills with you. Um, consider this a prelude to San Chin. One of the things we want to do is to get our breathing organized. So basically, very simply, breathe in through the nose and out through your mouth, okay, with that audible uh, forced uh, breathing that we do when we exhale. <clears throat> now you can do some Qigong exercises with this, and uh, very simple way to do it, and you can use this as a warm-up for your class or whatever. Basically what you're going to do is come from here. Sanchin. Step out. Hey! Big move. Yeah. Hey! Breathe. Push, push, push. Short breath out. Hey! Step. Keep your elbow in close to your body. Okay, breathe in. We're going to work on the Habu Di Kata now. And uh, as you may or may not know, this is our snake and crane kata. So Habu means snake. It is a Habu Di! Let me review some of the bunkai for Habu Di Kata right now. So, let us walk through the kata and then we'll take the movements, pick them apart, and we'll analyze the applications. Re, bow to begin with. Yoi. Next move is step out like this. Crane stance. Well, you know from watching our series, uh, White Crane Speed and Evasion, in our whole white crane style, Hakutsuru Kempo that we're doing, that this basic posture, this idea of the wings of the crane spreading out and all that, which is sort of a signature of the whole style, a bit overdone, but that's the signature. That's a self-defense movement. Very basic stuff. So let's go over that for a second. Dozo. Hey. So basic move is, let's say, uh, let's say he goes to choke me, right? So what I do is I step back, or in this case, if we're doing the kata, I have the left foot forward, like this, break the, uh, break the choke or the grip or whatever, or before he even gets a grip, I've, I've done this, grab a hold, bam, there's my self-defense move. 
the lead foot's already up in a cat stand, so you can kick faster that way. <laughs> there you go. Now, if you want to take that a little bit further, uh, what you can do is this. Uh, let's, do it as a, uh, let's do it as a punch, let's say. So we're going to go to the side, and we're going to start working the angles. So what you see in the kata is sort of a static move. Remember, the applications are not static. They're dynamic. You get to move around and stuff, see? So you've got this. Now you've got that move right there, see? So kick, spear, take down. Boom. And then, of course, once you have them here, you're not done yet. You've got arm bars, wrist locks, and all kinds of things that you can do all right, to get into more jujitsu applications. All right, so now, uh, next move. So, we well, the Habu Di Katha is a unique uh, form. Uh, you can see it looks a lot different than, than many other uh, Katha that you've seen. The rhythm and some of the techniques. Although, you can see snake techniques in it, and certainly there's lots of crane techniques. Now, the next question that you should be asking is, where did that come from? Where, what's the origination of this kata? Well, I learned the form from um, Grandmaster Seifuku Nita. He is a 10th Don in Shorinru Karate. I learned it from him in Okinawa. And uh, it is actually his grandfather's kata, and if you look at the history of it a little bit, if you can, if you can find it either on our other DVDs or on our website, uh, you'll see that the, um, the grandfather, as the story goes,